Welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Listen and learn what the wealthiest Americans are doing with their money and time that's different from the middle class. Learn the roadmap to financial and personal success that includes family, fitness, romance, charity, and all the parts of a balanced life. Now, here's your host, real estate investor and wealth coach, Trevor Davis. Happy Wednesday, everybody. This is the lead wealth coach up here at TWA, Trevor Davis. Hope y'all are having a great week. As always, we start off with the quote by Albert Einstein, which is the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. Knowing that you're changing no matter what allows you to take responsibility for the change that you cannot necessarily always control, but you can influence and direct and also get proactive onto the things that you are able to control to the fullest. For everybody that considers themselves a control freak out there, this should be good news to you. The smarter you are, the more able you are to affect change and direct it rather than just be a passive agent when it comes to change. So second thing I want to do is make sure that everybody gets the invitation for our expo, just like last week. Our expo is next Saturday. So at every part of the show, I'm going to be reminding you about the expo. If you are a guest, you're not a member of Total Wealth, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash expo to sign up and pick your food option. If you are a member, head into the online portal, sign in, go to the calendar, select the event, and select your food option there. And as a heads up to everybody who may not have been able to pick their food, if you did not do that, you don't recall doing that, give us a call at our office number so we can get your food choice for next Saturday. So that is our big fall expo Japan Fest theme. We've got six speakers on passive investing coming out. 8 to 12 is the speaking portion. We go out to the top of the parking garage for all the vendor tents, the networking, the fun, the food, and the beer that I'm making. That's all going to be there after the speaking portions. This is a 100% free event, so guests, you're allowed to bring guests as well. And members, please invite other guests to using that link, totalwealthacademy.com forward slash expo. Folks, I have a very special guest today. I've got Chris Mims from Integra Insurance. We're going to have a, another insurance discussion today. We had a, an insurance discussion last week, last month with another guest. So I really wanted to investigate more and get some more information for folks that are going to be help. That's hopefully helpful to you, how you use insurance and your understanding of insurance moving forward. So Chris, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you, Trevor. Have a good day. How are you doing today? Good. I'm great, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Thank you. Perfect. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, so, first things first, um, you're with Integra Insurance. They do auto, home, business, and life insurance. Um, tell me a little bit about the business and tell me about your experience in the insurance world. Well, Integra Insurance Group is actually a group of people, uh, all independent agents who have kind of conglomerate their, their power together to have the better buying power with the different insurance companies as opposed to just one agent, you know, uh, talking to companies and trying to get contracts with companies and standing on their own. So that's what Integra does. It's a family-owned group out of the big city of Huntington, Texas, just just, just south east, southeast of Lufkin. So yeah. I've been involved with them for a little over 10 years. Prior to that, I was a farmer's insurance agent for – uh, a little over 20 years before I, I lost my agency. I got very, very sick in 2008 and nine, and wasn't expected to, to make it. And uh, I did. I'm still here. And so I went wow. back into the business as an independent agent. So, so I have 30 years experience all here on the Gulf Coast. Wow. Awesome. That's that's great. So you've you've been around for basically all of the storms and all of that fun stuff that's been hitting us as, you know, Texas residents. If you lived here like me. I've been through several, uh, yeah, through, through all all my life. I'm a native Houstonian with the University of Houston, and yeah, I've been through all the all the big storms here. And a uh, funny story that was told that when I was recruited into this business in 1994, the man who recruited me told me, "If you can survive in this business right now, you can survive any time because this is the worst it's ever been, and it seems to have just gotten worse every year over the last 30 years." So, <laughs> wow. So when they say worse, what what are they referring to exactly? Just market conditions or just like the amount of events that have to be insured for? 
I actually, you're talking about market conditions. You know, when I, it, it, it depends on the situation. You know, back then there was a little bit of a little bit of a situation like right now where there was too much uh, business in one area and it was hard to be able to write homeowners insurance. And then we went through the early 2000s when we had the great mold crisis, where uh, claims were going out the window for for mold and insurance companies weren't writing because their policies were uh, were not explicit enough. The courts had said at that point that, yeah, you excluded it here, but you didn't exclude it there, so you got to pay the claims. So you went through that, and now we have what we've got been going on through the last, really, five years that has really accelerated, kind of like Helene is doing right now in the last three years. So as far as availability of the market and the pricing of the market. Yeah, understood. So you brought up something really interesting there with the mold. Um, I think a lot of folks hearing that, and I mean, me hearing that, I'm like, hold on a second. What What is the deal with mold? And obviously, living in a human environment like Southeast Texas, you know, I think everyone's seen mold in different spots in their house sooner or later, hopefully just like small spots. You know, you kind of smell it. You can address it. You can fix it. But w- what are we talking about with mold? Like, what? where should that be in the policy? And at what point is that something that becomes that an issue that has to be covered by the insurance. Like, what, what's the deal with mold in the insurance market? Well, the, the deal with mold in the insurance market, and go back to the history, back back in the early 2000s, uh, mold was specifically excluded in the first part of your policy. But okay. when you got back to the water section where it talked about water damage, they didn't exclude mold there. And mold is usually a result of water damage. So that opened up a whole big thing so that they, the insurance companies had to cover mold at that point in time because the court said you had to. So they've gone back and they've reworked the policies now so that there is a limit on what the mold uh, will be paid for. Uh, it will be paid for if there has been loss of water damage and there is mold in the area of the of the water damage. Back in the 2000s, you may have had a water water leak in the kitchen and people were trying to claim that their clothes in the second floor on the other side of the house were infested with mold, and they were getting all that stuff cleaned, and all the carpet in the entire house cleaned out, everything, and uh, causing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, and basically complete remodels. Yeah. So the policies have been reworked so that you know it's right there. It can only be right where the water leak was, where the water damage was, and it's got a limitation of five thousand. You can buy more, but I've never had a, a client do it. And since they put those uh, uh, restrictions on the policies in the in the mid two thousands, I've not seen another mold claim. Gotcha. So they've kind of nipped it in the bud then. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. So it's still technically possible um, to get coverage for that mold, and that doesn't sound unreasonable to me. I mean, if we're talking about the local area. Um, but I'm surprised to hear that it's effectively not being claimed for at all. Is it just? Did they go overboard, or is that just is that really what should have been there in the first place? And that's what should have been there in the first place. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and as you know, with everything, it, 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 when something becomes uh, available like that, there's a feeding frenzy, and everybody gets in there to you know you have mold experts and lawyers and all this other stuff jumping in there and trying to make as much money as they can. And now that there's a limit on the amount of money, there's nobody out there. You know, pushing it and trying to tell people, hey, let me check your house for mold, that sort of thing, uh, trying to get claims because there's really not, they can't make gold off of it now. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, there was a saying back in the early 2000s that mold was gold, and that's really <laughs> what, that, that's what, what, what the, the people that were, were you know, mitigating this stuff and everything were calling it, mold is gold. And now that the gold is gone, <laughs> you don't hear anything about mold claims. Wow. Mold is gold. Okay, so not so much anymore because they've corrected that in those policies. So, Chris, we're going to be going into the break. I would love to continue this conversation once we get back in just a few minutes. Um, Folks, I'm your host, Trevor Davis. We'll be right back after the break to continue the show with my guest, Chris Mims of Integra Insurance. Stay tuned. money in the bank or pay your insurance premium they take that money and go buy real estate with it why because it gives the highest rate of return and is the lowest risk this is called passive investing 
Due to some recent changes in the laws, you can now invest the exact same way. Total Wealth Academy can show you how. Visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend our free sample class on real estate investing. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com. Thank you. Folks, we are back for the TWA Wednesday radio show. I'm your host, Trevor Davis. The invitation again to the expo. If you are a guest, you're not a member of Total Wealth Academy, head to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash expo and sign up there. This event is 100% free, free education, free food, free drinks, free networking. If you want to have some fun next Saturday, come on out, sign up online, TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash expo and members listening in, head to the member portal, sign in, go to the calendar, select the event and select your food option there. If you have signed up for the event and you do not recall selecting your food, please give us a call at the office and we will get your food settled for you. So, Chris, you still with me? Yes, sir. Perfect. So, folks, just tuning in, I've got Chris Mims from Integra Insurance on the show with me today. So we're going to do some diving into the insurance market to get some helpful information for you, how you use your insurance and tips moving forward. So we were just talking about mold being gold in the 2000s. So um, the the takeaway for me is when I'm taking care of my properties and my personal my personal residence, I mean, what what is the biggest no no when it comes to mold? Like, how how do I want to make sure I'm avoiding mold just in general? The best way to avoid mold is to make sure and keep an eye on looking for hidden leaks or seepage in in different areas. Uh, you know, they now have out there. Uh, leak detectors that you can put in areas like if your hot water heater, uh, under your sink, places like that where you don't look all the time and that leaking could start slowly and uh, build up and you won't know it until one day you look in there and you've got the bottom of your cabinet has, is, is rotted out and things of that yeah. nature. So that's the big thing that you get uh, to watch for to make sure you don't have any mold issues is, is that sort of thing. Granted, if you have a, a quick water leak, then the best thing to do is to just get it dried up as quick as possible uh, and sometimes even just spray bleach and stuff on the area, but just get it cleaned up and get all the wet stuff out as quick as possible and don't let it set there. But the biggest thing is watching your house for slow leaks and and just maintaining those areas, make sure you don't have leaks in your plumbing. There are areas that you Mm -hmm. can't watch. I mean, I've seen claims where years later, uh, the, the builder, when they were building a a uh, nail went into a uh, PVC pipe, kind of like a nail goes into a, a um, into your tire, and it stays there and stays there mm-hmm. and stays there, and then all of a sudden it works itself loose, and you've got a leak behind the wall, and you just, those little things that happen, there's nothing you can do about. But the areas that you can take care of, your water heaters, your air conditioner, uh, under your sinks, those sort of things, just be mindful of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And that makes me think about with the freeze um, back in 2021, I mean, the big freeze with the big winter storm, I know a lot of people that were dealing with broken pipes were no doubt dealing with some water leakage in the house. I mean, my my own house, my personal residence dealt with that, um, but it wasn't a lot. I mean, it was a very small amount, and it seemed to be okay, and I didn't notice any water damage. I didn't see anything weird in the sheetrock or any weird smells around the house or in the attic or you know, at least the parts that I could I could access. But was there an increase in mold issues after the freeze? Not at all. Didn't have anybody calling me about, hey, we need to have our house checked for mold or anything like that. Didn't have any claims. Occasionally over the years, I'll have somebody call and say, you know, I had a water leak. Should I be concerned about mold? Uh, but that may be one call a year. It's, it was, it's just not something that's on pe- people's minds anymore. Gotcha. Okay, so it seems in that case it was basically, you know, most people probably caught the leakage pretty fast and then shut their water off and then, you know, got the pipes replaced like I did. So, cool. So that makes me feel a bit better about not having any perpetual mold at my own house. So when we're talking about personal residence insurance and rentals, um, of course, we specialize in rental real estate here at Total Wealth. I mean, flips wholesaling real estate, and then the commercial side. So for folks that are familiar with their own personal home insurance, they're going to get into a 
a insurance policy for their own rental portfolio, what are some of the differences there that folks need to be aware of when they start down the path of insuring their rental portfolios versus their personal residence? That's a very good question. Um, there's two types of insurance policies typically for your home as far as how they cover. There's a all-risk or open peril policy, and then there's a named peril policy. And most, a lot of the homeowner's policies uh, are open peril, which is the best policy to have. And that means that anything is covered unless it's specifically excluded in the policy. A named peril policy is the other way. It says we're going to tell you exactly what we're going to cover uh, up front. And if it's not listed as one of the things we're going to cover, it's not covered. And all of the investment properties type policies are named peril policies. They're going to tell you in the policy exactly what they're going to cover for. So that's the big difference in the two. Um, a, named, a named peril policy is basically on you to prove that it's covered. On an open peril policy, it's on the insurance company to prove it's not covered. So that's gotcha. the biggest difference in the two policies. <clears throat> and there are named peril policies out there for homeowners, and they're exactly the same as the uh, the policies for investment properties as far as the named perils are concerned. The other thing you need, do okay. need to watch for is sometimes on those named peril, peril policies, the first thing you want to look for is see what is excluded. It's like any other policy, health insurance, uh, auto insurance, what is excluded? Because on investment properties, a lot of times they're with uh, what we call surplus lines policies, which are not regulated by the state. So they can it's kind of they can do whatever they want to on their policies. So they might be excluding water coverage completely. Uh, we have some people right now that are excluding wind and hail up here in the Houston area, which you can't buy wind and hail separately in the Houston area, uh, but they're excluding it. So basically, you don't okay. want that policy. So the big thing is to look for the exclusions on the policy. And then you also want to know if it's a policy that's going to cover you for liability or if you need to get a, a like a landlord policy or if you have to get a separate liability policy to cover yourself. Gotcha. Okay, so I definitely have some stuff to ask about with that. So when we're taking a look at the open peril policy with the personal residence, you know, that's saying basically anything is covered with a couple exceptions and then the name peril that's saying, well, we're basically going to tell you exactly what is covered, and then if it's not stated, then it's not covered. Is that basically the gist in a nutshell? Exactly. Okay. So when we're looking at these name perils, so first of all, um, I feel like when I see open peril versus name peril, um, I think I've heard this somewhere, but does name peril have anything to do with, you know, it only insures for like a named storm? I swear someone said that sometime, and it doesn't seem like that's accurate. No, that is not accurate at all. Uh, named peril means it's that they're going to list what you're covered for. It's going to be things you're used to, like fire, lightning, smoke, vandalism, theft, uh, falling objects, wind, hail, water damage, all of those sorts. It's specifically naming the peril that it's going to insure you for. Uh, it's not have anything to do with the storm. Now, on the policies, you do have deductibles. And what came into play in the last 10 years or so is named storm deductibles. Uh, so some policies will have a deductible for everything that can happen other than hurricane, wind, and hail. And then those companies will have separate deductibles. It may be a deductible that covers hurricane, wind, and hail, or a separate deductible for wind and hail, and then one for a named storm. And that's kind of what we got into in this last in this last through, through the direct show and barrel mm -hmm. is those uh, deductibles for name storms and wind and hail have gone up to a lot of times at least two percent and I see it as high as three and five percent. So we had a lot of financial uh, hurt in our area, and we as insurance agents were not able to really help our people because the deductibles were so high that a lot of people now, especially on the roof, are really self-insuring themselves because of those deductibles. But that's only on the, you know, wind and hail and, and, and name storm deductibles that, the, that they're there high, that high. Gotcha. So with that derecho, um, that's basically, that's going to be a wind issue. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So that gets covered under wind. So with the name peril policy, 
what what are some of the most common exclusions that you know someone's taking a look and they're they're getting this property they're rent they're going to be renting it out they're taking a look at some bread and butter standard name peril policies what are some of the most common exclusions and with that what are some of those exclusions that people need to be extra watchful for and maybe get a policy that might cover one of those exclusions at a different you know from a different policy that's a good question so when you first of all excuse me approach it that it's a name to peril there's going to be less overall exclusions in the policy uh as compared to the open peril, because they've already told you exactly what they're going to do. So when you're looking for exclusions there, you're looking for common things that they normally would cover that they've decided not to cover. Like I mentioned a minute ago, some of the insurers now in this area, in Houston area, not on the on the coast, but up here, are deciding to exclude wind and hail. Well, you yeah. don't you don't in a hurricane area, you don't want a policy without wind and hail coverage. Uh, the other big thing that most insurance companies will exclude in that situation would be the slow leaks and seepage or he- hidden le- leaks, like I mentioned to you before. So those are the two big ones. Uh, another one they will be would be falling objects. So if you're in a heavily wooded area uh, with a lot of trees and stuff, you don't want to have a policy that doesn't cover for a falling object because if that tree falls on your house, then you're not covered. So those are the, yeah. the big ones that I, the big ones that I see is uh, the hidden water and um, and uh, seepage and falling objects, of course, the wind and hail. Another thing people in investment properties need to be aware of is the vacancy clause on policies. Most okay. policies have a vacancy clause, and so if you have a, va- a property that is vacant for more than 60 days, then your policy could be null and void as far as any claims are concerned, especially for something like vandalism or theft if the place is vacant. And so be aware of if your policy has that vacancy clause, and most of them do. Now, you can Mm -hmm. buy policies that will cover you if your house is vacant, but those are pretty expensive. Yeah, gotcha. I'll definitely have a few questions after that once we get back from the break, Chris. Um, Folks, we're continuing the conversation with Chris Mims of Integra Insurance. We're going to be back after the halfway point. I'm your host, Trevor Davis, with the TWA Wednesday radio show. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. money in an IRA, 401k, or other retirement account, you can use it to invest passively in real estate without tax or penalty. Our average rate of return is three times that of the stock market and mutual funds with much less volatility. If you have over $70,000, you can start passive investing today. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to the Wednesday radio show. I'm your host, Trevor Davis, lead wealth coach up here at TWA. Again, invite to the Expo next Saturday, October 5th. It's going to start right at 8 a.m. sharp. Six speakers on passive investing in commercial deals from apartments, storage units, retirement homes, and more. Then Dan Nawson, Navy SEAL, gold medal Paralympic athlete, is going to finish off the speaking section with a very, very, very motivational speech. Um, I can't wait to see that and hear all of what he has to say next Saturday. Then at 12, we go up to the parking garage where all the vendors have set their tents up. Then we've got the food, we've got the free drinks, and we've got the fun. And at that point, you know, most people are are probably leaving around 2.30-ish, 3-ish. It just depends. Um, it's a lot of fun. So it's a full day of fun and real estate education. So, folks, if you're a guest, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash expo, sign up, pick your food. This is a 100% free event. Members, go into the member portal, sign in, select your food for the event by selecting the event on the calendar. So, as always, we do the stock market update now. The Dow Jones year-to-date is 1199. S&P is at 21.43. NASDAQ, 18.54. So, And I looked at the stuff today, and it kind of dipped down today, which is, you know, normal over the course of short periods of time. But we are, to be fair, looking at the highest gains for the year for Dow Jones and S&P, second highest for NASDAQ. 
So things seem to be still going pretty swell for the stock market, folks, despite all of these other signs that things are a change in. The stock market folks are just trying to drive this bull market for as long as possible. I'm just going to continue to warn people as much as I can. You've got to do what Warren Buffett is doing. He's pulling money out. He's getting liquid. You have to listen to that. You've got to take that seriously. You know, maybe you don't do exactly that, but you have to pay attention to what the most successful stock market investor out there is doing. You have to take that seriously. You know, whether or not you're going to be in stocks forever or whether or not you're in real estate whatsoever, you've got to pay attention to what someone like Warren Buffett is doing. So let's get back into the conversation with Chris. Chris, are you still with me? Yes, sir. All right, folks, I've still got Chris Mims from Integra Insurance on the line. We are talking about all the ins and outs of insurance. So I, I want to talk about and continue to talk about these exclusions. And then we're looking at, you know, the falling objects part, which we saw for a lot of folks that, you know, got caught up in the derecho. So what was that experience like? I mean, for a lot of folks that had the coverage or didn't have the coverage, I mean, if they have it, how exactly does that cover a full tree falling on a car or your house or your neighbor's car or your neighbor's house? That's a very good question in the fact that, uh, of course, if you have the, the falling on your car, is going to be a separate policy than falling on your house. And cars are covered for falling objects as well. So if a tree falls on your, uh, on your car, your car is going to be repaired as well. Uh, the difference comes is that most of the people, when they had falling objects, the trees didn't hit uh, their houses. So unless the tree was uh, blocking their exit and uh, egress from their, their, their property, they couldn't get out and stuff, they probably didn't have any uh, coverage to actually pay for the tree removal uh, in, that, in that situation. If it yeah. is on your house, then or is covering your driveway so that you can't get out, then the policies will pay to up to $1,000, most policies about $1,000, to remove that tree. The damage to your house, of course, you've removed the tree, and so the damage to your house is going to be repaired just like if anything else happened to your house, so water damage or whatever. The damage that the falling object did to your house, which is probably going to be on the roof and maybe the side of your house, I've... During Hurricane well, uh, Arita, I actually saw a lot of pine trees that sliced houses in the middle like like butter. Yeah. So you're basically gonna, you know, they're gonna repair. You have to repair your house. And uh, the question comes in that point is is the falling is the falling tree? It's still a wind event. That's what happens. So the falling tree is still gonna be covered under the the wind event deductible. Uh, whereas other times, if it's just you know. A tree that, uh, for whatever reason, comes down and it's not a wind event, then it would be under the, the first deductible, the one percent, the the lower deductible. So it all goes back to actually what was the first event that caused the caused the situation. Okay, gotcha. So it, most policies will basically already cover that damage, regardless of whether it's a falling object, or they have to make sure that that is not excluded with the falling objects. Exclusion. Well, on most homeowners policies, falling objects is not excluded, but there are some okay. uh, where when you're so when you're out there shopping and you're looking for uh, something, you're looking for the cheapest thing you can get. Well, when you get do the cheapest thing you can get, you're going to get what you get. And that's the policies that sometimes are going to exclude those things like falling objects and things of that. And it's going to be namely it's always going to be in that situation a named peril type of policy where something like that's going to be left out of the perils that are listed there. So that's okay. where you look at. So when you think you're getting a good deal, you might be getting a good deal, but you might not. And going back to that, we're talking about exclusions there, a lot of the, a lot of the policies now are offering uh, the opportunity to limit the amount of water damage you are covered for. Uh, where okay. in the past, you were covered for the full value of your house for the water damage. And when we're talking water damage, we're not talking about flooding. We're not talking about w rain that comes through the roof. We're talking about water that comes out of your uh, plumbing system or appliances, that sort of thing. And so you would have full value of the house. Uh, I had a 
one of my very first claims as an insurance agent. My my client started the washing when she left for work in the morning, and when she came home in the evening, the washer was still filling up, and so was the house. So wow. So we I replaced the entire uh, that it was like a flood, except it wasn't a flood, and we replaced the entire you know six inches of the part of the bottom part of the house and all the flooring and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what I'm wow. talking about when I talk about water damage. So to save money in some some policies are limiting that amount of coverage to five thousand dollars or ten thousand uh, dollars, or some companies are uh, giving the agent the ability to choose. And so some agents are giving the lower amounts, uh, maybe twenty thousand uh, dollars, to lower the price of the policy. And uh, I have that option on several policies, but in my mind, I'm going, I. I can't do this to a client because I can't guarantee that a water claim is not going to go over 20000 That claim 30 years ago went well over $20,000. Mm-hmm. So uh, so that's the other thing to watch when things are lower as far as it's not an exclusion, but it's a limitation on, on the coverage. So, gotcha. so see if there's any limitations on the coverage. for, And it's mainly on wa- water and hidden water. So most policies that cover wa- water damage will have a separate coverage for hidden and seepage. It'll be separate because so, not all companies will cover that. And so they may have a limitation just on the hidden and seepage, but will give you full coverage on regular water. But that hidden seepage, they may put a, a limitation there. So underwater damage, look and see if there's any limitations on the amount that they will pay. Okay, understood. So, yeah, that doesn't sound like the best way to arrive at your house after a long day of work. Um, No, it wasn't. (laughs) Yeah, and and that dear lady's still one of my clients today today, because I I, I just had knee surgery, and she was just going through a divorce, and she wasn't that far away, and she called, and I went over there on crutches to see what was going on. So. Man, I I can't imagine. It's just like, it seems like the water would just like start leaking out of the house and it wouldn't get up to six inches on the sheetrock, but I mean. Well, it seeps up. Yeah. You know, the sheetrock starts sucking it up, you know. Uh, So it wasn't necessarily that high, but you get in the carpet and it's sucking up into that wood and that sheetrock and stuff. So that's how it it had to take that much. And literally, they usually take about 18 inches to go up to the, the. the uh, uh, electrical or whatever's easiest for them to cut off and come back in and, and replace the sheetrock. So yeah. So how long did that repair take? Man, that was thirty years ago. I cannot remember. So yeah, no problem. I really, I don't really remember it. And, and a lot of that re- remember is once an adjuster comes and looks at something uh, and says, "Yes, we're going to cover it," that sort of thing. Then that is on you after that to start lining up the contractors mm-hmm. and scheduling that work out. And so that would fit into uh, when can you get somebody. It's kind of like after the freeze. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were having problems getting their plumbing fixed for several weeks because plumbers were too busy. They couldn't get to them. So yeah, so that sort of thing. Yeah, and the supplies. I mean, it was just exactly. kind of waiting on the PEX plumbing for my house was really the biggest hang-up because it was just like, no, we're not going to do copper. We're going to upgrade to the modern PEX which has been awesome, but it was just, there was such a, they were completely blown out at every store, every plumbing supply store everywhere, so they had to get it from out of state. So that was the hang up for the freeze. So I'm sure a lot of people were in that same boat as I was at that time. So, all right, folks, we are going to be going into the final segment of today's show. Chris is going to hang on the line. We're going to finish out the show after we come back from the break. I'm your host, Trevor Davis, with the TWA Wednesday radio show. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. market was never designed to build wealth. It was designed to keep up with inflation. The average rate of return over the last 75 years is about 7%. You'll get that even with the ups and downs. If you want a higher rate of return and less volatility, consider real estate. We make about three times as much as the stock market. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That is TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to the final segment of today's Wednesday radio show. I'm your host, Trevor Davis, lead wealth coach up here at TWA. Finally, finally, with the invitation to the Expo, that is next Saturday, October 5th. Again, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash Expo if you are a guest. If you are not a member of TWA, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash Expo 
and sign up for the expo. This is 100% free, and you get to pick your food option there. We start at 8 a.m. sharp, 8 to 12. And then after that, we go up to the parking garage where we've got the vendor tents, we've got the food, fun, and networking for as long as you practically wish. And then members, go into the member portal, go to the calendar, and sign up for the event there by selecting the October 5th Expo. Select your food there. We are a week and a half away from the Expo. Sign-ins are rapidly accelerating, and there is a certain point where we have to stop the amount of registrations. So, don't wait. Sign up now. Sign up today. Get your reservation done. Get your spot booked, and we will see you next Saturday. So, Chris, we are at the final segment. You still with me? Yes, sir. I'm still here. Perfect. So, let's go ahead and dive into some more of those. Um, Because when you talked about that washing machine deciding to flood the house, you know, the, the vision in my head was, of course, like the cartoon vision of it being six inches of water just solid, and then you open the door and you don't see any water coming out, and then it just blasts out. So, obviously, that's not the case. What are some what are some other examples in your experience of situations where it was just a radically just almost cartoonish level of misfortune that that insurance was able to help out with? It might not necessarily be that radical, but what are some of those other experiences that really stick out? Well, I like how you said that where insurance is it was to 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 help out in because that's what insurance was designed to do is help when people have a catastrophic loss, uh, not a ma- not something to maintain their homes or something like that, but for catastrophic loss type things. Yeah, and I guess probably the biggest ones I've seen are uh, water so water losses, especially since we started putting these uh, water heaters in the attics of our houses. I don't know who got that idea to do that. But, you know, we mm-hmm. don't go up into our attics that often. That's why I mentioned the leak detectors in the pans up there uh, to, to see anything. And water heaters are going to rust mm-hmm. at some point in time, and they're going to burst. And it's more than likely going to be when you don't least expect it. And now you've got water pouring uh, through your attic and then coming through the roof. And a lot of times it'll burst up there and be making all the uh, – soaked up by all the uh, insulation – and things of that nature, and just building and building and building, and then just finally the sheetrock collapses, and you got all this water pouring into your house. Yeah. Uh, so those are the type of things. And then, of course, the one that's just sad that happens sometimes and is really, really sad is uh, you, you start the water in the bathtub to give your kid a bath. There's a phone call, uh, somebody at the door, you leave the bath running, you get distracted, and 30 minutes later, an hour later, you realize you hear water running and oh my gosh, you know, I feel like a fool and I've got water running all over the place and uh, my bedroom's soaked with water, all this kind of stuff. So yeah, those are the silly things that happen, but that's life. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, putting a water heater up in the attic, um, yeah, that, that just, that one drives me nuts because it's just, that thing is so heavy. That's, that has so much water. And, you know, we're talking to obviously about the tank water heaters, you know, if it's a, right. if it's one of the n- newer, you know, on-demand water heaters, you know, that I get, that's a little different, I suppose. For me, it's like having that big, huge, fat tank up there, that just makes me nervous in general, because it's just, it's so much weight, it's so much water, it's just like, that's that's going to make me feel uncomfortable all the time. My My house has the water heater in the garage. Um, very easily accessible, and if something bursts, it's just going to flow down, flow out to the garage, flow out to the street. Minimal damage by comparison. Of course, there's going to be damage, but that's going to be a much different story than having it just at the top of your house and water flows down. I, yep. I, I don't, I don't personally get it, so I can, I can definitely understand some of that frustration. So, are they? And insurance cut. And insurance companies are now asking those questions about, okay, where is your uh, water heater and how old is it? Uh, because mm-hmm. they've latched onto that idea as well as saying, okay, if these water heaters are over 10 years old, they're just waiting, uh, you know, wait, waiting to rust out. And we know people are not going and looking at them and taking care of them. So they're, some of the insurance companies are now asking that question and deciding if they want to insure you uh, based on where your uh water heater is which most of the new homes is in the attic but then how Mm -hmm. old is that water heater so 
Yeah, and I was just about to ask because that does seem to be a newer build thing is they're putting the water heaters up in the attic. Um, and I just don't I just don't really understand that. I mean, it seems to make so much sense to put it into your your garage and like almost well, basically every house it's gonna have a big two car garage. You've got the space that you can put at the back. A lot of new builds have like that little step area at the back where mm-hmm. people like to put their, you know, hardware, their workbench. And I've seen some that have the water heater there, but yeah, it definitely seems like most of the new builders are putting it in there. So if we're talking about, you know, a new build house and then they're factoring in the fact that the water heater is up there, I mean, does that kind of make, is that one of the things that maybe makes insurance on newer builds kind of the same as older houses or where are you seeing, like, which one is generally more expensive in the current market? If it's like an 80s, 70s build or if it's like a new build? Very good question. So statistically, supposedly, you know, insurance is done by all these actuarials who, you know, play with numbers and all the statistics and all that kind of stuff, kind of like investors do as well. And so statistically, uh, insurance companies give heavy discounts to brand new homes, but those discounts get lower and lower. And then what they find is about year 10, things start breaking Mm -hmm. and people start turning in insurance claims to try to get their house fixed, those things that broke. So, uh, but a house that's been established and well-maintained is not going to get that new home discount, but it's going to probably be less of a risk for them. But they've seen statistically that new homes start breaking at year 10 and people start turning in discounts. But for those first three or four or five years, there's usually they may, may be a builder's uh, uh, warranty on it mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So uh, they go out and gobble up those those homes that are brand new to because uh, they have less risk in, in that situation, at least for the first five to ten years. So, Yeah, first couple of years for sure. So one thing I definitely want to get into as well um, as we get into this final, final segment because we talked about the exclusions with wind and hail, and I feel like that's going to be a massive takeaway. Um, are most policies excluding wind and hail, or is it kind of like half? Or, I mean, that's just something generally people should be looking out for. But how common is that for people like trying to get a new insurance policy in the Houston market? So along the along the coast, uh, it, in most situations, is ex- is excluded immediately. But you buy the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association policy there. Mm-hmm. Any any of your standard policies uh, here in the area. When I say standard, I'm talking about policies that are regulated by the state of Texas. Uh, and there's some no names that you don't know, but they are still regulated. But your but your your Liberty Mutuals, your uh, Safeco's, your All States, all those type of companies, they're not going to be excluding wind and ha- wind, wind or hail on your policy. It's that in this market now where it's very difficult sometimes to get a policy and an agent needs to go into what we call the surplus market, which is not regulated. It's kind of like the Wild West sometimes. Those are the people that in some cases are starting to exclude wind and hail. And I haven't sold anything in that market yet, but I've had to investigate it several times to see if I could find something for somebody and the price is so high. But uh, probably about three to four, Three out of four uh, have ex- recently have excluded wind and hail, and I go, well, I can't sell this policy anyway. So I, I tell mm-hmm. tell the people I don't have anything for them. So that's that's the area that it's, that it's in is the non regulated market. My fear is is that we're kind of this area here in Houston is the, is the single largest hurricane exposure in the world, the Houston Galveston area. When people think about Florida or something, but it's as yeah. far as a dense population, this area is. And we're kind of like Florida and Fort, Fort Bend and Harris County because we're growing so fast, the insurance companies can't keep up with it. So I've been gearing my agency up to be able to do, investigate more of that non-regulated market so that I have something, if there is something to offer people, because I'll go into an area. I did this last, last week. I had a, a home in, uh, just out in Waller County. So, so Chris, I don't, mean to, I don't mean to That's stop a- you right here, but let me go ahead and give you the opportunity to tell everybody about your business because we are less than 30 seconds in. So, so. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to help anybody. I don't love insurance. I love people. If you want to get hold of me, I'm at 832-280-5233, and I'll be happy to help. Perfect. Thank you for coming into the show today, Chris. I really appreciate it. You take care. 
All right, everybody. Thank you to Chris Mims for tuning in. I'm your host, Trevor Davis, and I will be on the air next Wednesday. Y'all take care. You've been listening to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Please remember that this show is for entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as legal, tax, or investing advice. Always get a professional opinion before making any investment decisions. To find out more about coaching and consulting at Total Wealth Academy, visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend one of our free sample classes on real estate investing. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.